I know all of us woke up thinking about this anniversary. It's one of those anniversaries that probably we were counting down from the day we were born until this anniversary came out. It's one of those things that we'll always remember. You can even see the reason for the anniversary on the screens right here. It's obvious we all woke up thinking today, to, this year is the 150th anniversary of St. Joseph being declared the universal patron of the Catholic Church. Isn't that exciting? I mean, that's amazing. I know everybody jumped out of bed this morning and saying, let's hope that we can hear about St. Joseph today. It's something that's typical to most third Sunday, Gaudate, rose-colored wearing. I'm colorblind, so there's no rose colors on me. But all those, that, you know, it's like it's like everything's pointing towards this. And this picture that you can see up there is a picture of St. Joseph. It's my favorite statue of St. Joseph. It's found in Montreal, Canada. And it is at the place where this, actually, it's really beautiful. One of the, um, the icons in our church here is dedicated to Brother Andre Bassett. And he's a saint, St. Andre Bassett. And one of the things that he did was he just opened doors. He wasn't very smart. He couldn't become a priest. Couldn't even become a deacon, you know what I mean? He's like, yeah, I just had to settle for just being a door opener. But he opened so many doors that he brought people to Jesus through St. Joseph. And this was his little oratory, where every day he would bring people there to pray, and he would change this oil for these lamps, and these special oil would be rubbed on different people with different issues. And all these miracle cures happened through Brother Andre Bassett, who just simply said, go to Joseph. And, and so I think our Holy Father is asking us this year, as he kicked off just a couple days ago, a year dedicated to St. Joseph. Why should we go to St. Joseph? Why should each of us this year try to be attentive to St. Joseph? Well, let's first of all just think, who is St. Joseph? One of the, my favorite characteristics of St. Joseph is when did he do his best work? Well, he was asleep. I mean, who can't relate to that? Who's not exhausted during this crazy COVID time to the point where I don't even know if we sleep well? Last night, I don't remember how many nightmares I had. And so one of the great things about St. Joseph is he does his best work when he's sleeping on it. So all of us can take our petitions, those things that are pulling us down. Maybe we have a relative who we can't visit. Maybe this Christmas is just going to be about me and Santa Claus and maybe one other person and that's it. Maybe Santa Claus will get quarantined. Who knows? But the thing is, is that we need to take those petitions and write them down and give them over to St. Joseph and let him sleep on it. Because, boy, when he slept on it, you know what happened? He became the father and the guardian of Jesus and the household of the Holy Family. And, and so it's so good for us to go to Joseph. Especially now, I think all of us priests who, who are in our great grouping and, and obviously have so much time, it's so beautiful to be able to hear your stories, uh, do the different sacraments. Our dear Mallory Smarter, she got married yesterday, what day was yesterday? No, on Friday. Her wedding was supposed to be on Saturday, and at the last minute, because everything was shutting down, she got married on Friday. And you know how all this is going on with COVID. I'm sure it's happening to you. Everything seems changed. We're still wearing Halloween masks. All these things are, you know, seemingly just causing more and more despair, depression, darkness. And I don't know about you, but I especially think of all of our young people who, uh, I cringe every time I hear another story of, of self-harm and, and, and of downtrodden and like not being with your friends. And yeah, it's a good time to go to St. Joseph. And, and the Pope, uh, in his letter, uh, he, he refers to this kind of year in a very beautiful way. And just two words in Latin, which is patris corde, which means with a father's heart. Don't we really need the father's heart now? A father who tenderly cares for us, a father who courageously protects us, a father who, who can guide us, a father who even some of the great titles of St. Joseph bear witness to what he can do for us. And, and, and so it's so beautiful to look at the way St. Joseph, the many times St. Joseph is portrayed as this palm olive commercial guy who's about to die. He's like in the geriatrics world of the, of the heaven, you know? He's old, 
He's got some type of a lily thing going on, and he looks like he's just on the last step of his life. But that probably is not the way this guy lived. Some people have calculated, so every three years in the book of Leviticus, Jews were called to walk to Jerusalem back and forth from their home. Well, let's just say he lived for 25 years with Jesus and Mary and had to walk back and forth from Nazareth to Jerusalem three times a year. That would be the equivalent to walking around the world. Tell me what 85-year-old that's more worried about palm olive and olive and flowers growing could do that. You see, he was a young, he was obviously somebody who could move rocks and boulders and, and wood, somebody who had a vibrancy to him that could protect even against the wicked Roman Empire that wanted to do what? Kill baby Jesus. And then all of a sudden he had to do, he'd get uprooted and go to Egypt where he probably didn't know the language, didn't know the jobs. And we hear about today one of the biggest insecurities is job security. We hear about the, the plight of people trying to find safe shelter. This is the person to go to, St. Joseph. And in fact, it's so beautiful to think that if there is one person that the devil hates, it's Mary. And that's why we have Our Lady of Guadalupe here, because yesterday was the feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. And one of the things that you realize, uh, one of my favorite titles of St. Joseph is St. Joseph, Terror of Demons. You see, the demons hate Mary. And by association, they would hate anybody who's married to her. And in fact, if Mary was, you know, without sin, Jesus was God, and all of a sudden this man, who's the worst of the three, if you can imagine, St. Joseph, the poor guy, he's in this household, and he's the one who's called to steward the household. He's the one who's called to lead the prayer. He's the one who's called to protect it. He absolutely terrorized the devil. The devil hates him. And so we go to St. Joseph for these beautiful things that are part of his life, that the Father wants to share with us, that our church wants us to dedicate a year to dear St. Joseph. We can hear it in the scriptures even today. It says to announce a year of favor from the Lord in our first reading. And we hear Joseph being called a just man, a faithful man. But I think one of the great titles of his, he's just that faithful steward of the household of God. And what else are we as a family but the household of the Lord? What else are we as a church but a family of families of households of God? And so if God decided to entrust Mary and Joseph to Joseph, don't you think it's time that we too entrust the greatest treasures of our life, starting with ourselves, our children, our employees, our friends, our schools, our extended community, this country, this world to the protection and to the love of the heart of the Father, St. Joseph. There's practical ways of doing this and we'll unfold it this year, but I would just suggest today to just simply have it in your heart to go to St. Joseph. You hear that phrase, go to St. Joseph in scripture, when what was going on in the Jewish community, a famine, and the, the 11 brothers had sold St. Joseph into slavery, or Joseph, the, um, one of the, 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 the clan members of the tribe of Israel. And so now he goes down to Egypt and becomes like the prime minister, and he distributes the food in Egypt. And the Jewish, his Jewish brothers come down, and they say, go to Joseph, because it's in Joseph where the pandemics, the famines, the trials, the difficulties can be managed, just as he had to manage the household of God. There's another image um, up here as well. That's a zoom up image. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but I spent two hours in front of this image and nearly just, I don't know, it was amazing. There is St. Joseph, he's lifting baby Jesus up in one hand, and the other baby Jesus seems to grab St. Joseph's fingers and clinging to his finger, you know? And, and so this is such a great image of St. Joseph, who, what do you do when you go to St. Joseph? He lifts baby Jesus into your arms. He like lets you touch his fingers and, and cuddle with Jesus. And that's what God the Father did with Joseph, is like make Joseph his foster father. So I just wanted to end by, yeah, simply inviting us all to go to Joseph. Perhaps, um, you know, you'll see on our website different means to do this. Uh, perhaps just entrusting yourself to Joseph. Maybe when you look at your nativity set, dwell a little bit more on Joseph. 
And at night, all those things that are terrorizing you, maybe write them down and there's a beautiful statue of St. Joseph sleeping and let him sleep on it. So I just wanted to conclude with this beautiful litany to St. Joseph. Uh, and uh, maybe we could either help you look up at that or just think of a St. Joseph image in your own heart. And let us just finish by praying this, okay? Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And the response is, have mercy on us. God, the Father of heaven. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world. God, the Holy Spirit. Holy Trinity, one God. And the response is, pray for us. Saint Joseph, light of patriarchs, spouse of the mother of God, chaste guardian of the virgin, foster father of the son of God, zealous defender of Christ, head of the holy family, Joseph most just, Joseph most chaste, Joseph most courageous, mirror of patience, model of workmen, glory of domestic life, pillar of families, comfort of the afflicted, hope of the sick, patron of the dying, terror of demons, protector of the Holy Church. He has made him Lord of his household and prince over all his possessions. Let us pray, O oh God, who in the loving providence of blessed St. Joseph to be the spouse of your Holy Mother, grant us the favor of having him for our intercession in heaven, whom on earth we venerate as our protector, who live and reign forever and ever. Please stand for the creed.